Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's pray and get started in today's session. Uh, we can begin with a word of prayer. Anyone can please lead. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning and we thank you for this class, my Father Lord. Yes, Lord, as we, gonna, we are here to learn from your word, my Father Lord. Lord, give us wisdom. No, let's understand that we learn more and more from your word, my Father Lord. And Lord, yes, Lord, we really want to learn, my Father Lord. And I thank you for all things. I thank you for ma'am. I thank you for all students also, my Father Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Um, we will move ahead to the next chapter here, which is regarding the methods of workings. We saw last couple of classes about the origin of Satan, demons, and also the nature of Satan, demons. We saw that, uh, you know, their, the way we, we describe them also has to do with their activities. Uh, they work against the purposes of God. They work against the people whom God has created. So what exactly do they do is what we will understand now. Their nature, we have an idea, OK? But what are their methods of workings when it comes to um, interfering you know, in, in uh, God's plan for people and this world? Uh, so we look at that. Here in our notes, uh, chapter 4, there is a reference to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Uh, could somebody please read it, either the online students or our students here? This verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We are not ignorant of his devices. Devices. Okay. So devices is a word which is used there. Devices. The Greek word there, neomata, um, means purposes, schemes, plots. So we, he is an enemy. Satan is an adversary to us. And he works on ideas to pull us down. We can also call them as schemes or plots. OK, so what are these schemes and plots? One thing, OK, let's also look at another verse before I, I begin to explain. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Ephesians 6 verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay. So another term here. Earlier we saw devices. This time the term is wiles. K W I L E S. And that simply means methods of working. So Satan. From the beginning till now, if we observe in scripture and also in our experiences, we would notice that he primarily uses a couple of techniques or methods over and over and over and over again. For example, deception. What did he do to Eve? He deceived her. You will get this, or you will get something else. But uh, he led her in the path of destruction. If you look at the life of Judas, we read that he um, sold Jesus for 30 silver coins because he was deceived in his head, thinking, I'm going to get something great out of uh, betraying Jesus. But what he was looking at was actually a very small amount compared to the redemption of the world, which is so much greater. So he was deceived. We could say that. So the point I'm trying to make is Satan uses some common methods or schemes quite often. And if we figure it out, then it becomes a lot easier for us to deal with him. So there is a list of these uh, common common methods. 
things like temptation common very common okay, even jesus he tried to tempt intimidation intimidation is to uh, bring a sense of fear uh, through which the person is paralyzed Par paralyzed not physically but paraly paralyzed meaning not allowing them to move forward where you're so scared that you don't want to act on what god said to us so intimidation you scare the people uh, such that they they become inactive intimidation intrusion intrusion is to try and uh, barge in to try and uh, you know in a wrongful way come into our territory or our zone so intrusion is something he does so i want to explain these now we we'll look at it a uh, little later each one in depth uh, let me list them out opposition deception oppression possession domination empowerment okay so these are all the techniques that satan uses there is also a chart which is given in our notes uh, and i hope you know you're able to see it uh, let me let me see if i can share it here for our online students i'll try to share the screen Yes, we are there. Okay, this will be helpful because then you know you can look at it as I share. So we talked about the different techniques um, uh, or the methods. These um, methods of Satan can affect a person in varying levels or degrees okay that's what this table tells us so here we have a stage which is known as influence so either with temptation deception intimidation oppression satan could influence a person so that would be the lowest level at which he tries to affect people's lives now if we are not careful it can go to another level okay so you see an arrow there increasing okay increasing levels of demonization or the uh, effect of satan in our in our lives so if we don't deal with him at the level of influence we may experience something known as oppression now if that is unchecked unfortunately it would be at the next level uh, of what he can do and that is possession but we've already clarified that for a believer this is not applicable uh, a demon can never possess a believer we therefore <coughs> use the term demonization where there is we will talk about it later it's almost it appears like the person is possessed but the believer cannot be possessed okay uh, that is possession for an unbeliever or demonization for a believer and of course the final uh, uh, stage here that we see is empowerment okay uh, so we'll talk about each of these levels so talking about influence influence is where the enemy would try to um, it, uh, interfere intrude into our lives through any of these these methods he will try you know uh, uh, to intimidate us tempt us deceive us uh, and all but as children of god what we must do is we have to overcome the devil okay overcome satan overcome demons how is it possible to overcome do you know any scripture that talks about overcoming satan Huh. 
when Jesus is being tempted by Satan and huh. he uh, overcomes the devil through the scriptures. To scriptures, through the word of God. Okay, yeah. great. So that's a tool we can use against the devil. What else can we use right at this stage? Let's say I'm facing temptation. So I have to do something, right? Immediately uh, through the, the um, weapons that God has given. So what are some of those weapons? The armor of God. The armor of God. Okay. The armor of God we have. Uh, anything else you can think of? Prayer. Okay. Prayer. We can we can uh, wage war against the enemy through prayer. How about the uh, name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus? They overcame him by the blood of uh, the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So you see, in the word of God, there are many things that are given to us that can help us overcome. Right when I'm getting influenced, the way uh, you know, Rin pointed out, when Jesus was tempted, he said, it is written. He used the weapon of God's word, the sword of the spirit. He used the word, it is written, it is written. And he fought and he got rid of the enemy. So that is what is expected from a believer. When we sense that there is an influence of the enemy in this area, immediately you use the word, you use the name, right? You rebuke, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Uh, or you bind, oh, these spirits are at work. We bind in the name of Jesus. We have to get rid of the influence at this very stage, okay? There is a very, there is an interesting statement that Jesus made. Uh, he says this in John 14 and verse 30. He says, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. So what Jesus is saying is, Satan may want to influence him, but he cannot. Reason is, there is nothing in Jesus which aligns or which agrees with Satan. For example, remember in the last class we said if there is a plate of food with uh, uh, leftover food and we don't clean the plate, what is happening? It's it's a, an invitation to flies and bugs to actually come. But what if the plate is clean? There is nothing in the plate which can invite flies. Isn't it? So very similar. What Jesus is saying is, there is nothing in, there is, uh, he has nothing in me. So Satan has nothing in Jesus, which will align Jesus to satanic works. So when we apply this to our own lives, basically, what Satan wants is, when he tries to influence us, he wants to find something in us, that will agree with him. For example, you know, the works of the flesh. So if he finds, let's say, lust in my life, then it's easy for him. OK, come on. Something in this person's life is aligning to who I am. And then he'll start working on it more and see that, OK, let's make it worse. Or uh, if there's unforgiveness, then that's he'll be very happy. He'll think, OK, I can take the influence to the next level because there is something in this person which is aligning or agreeing with what I'm doing. You know, so any form of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, flesh, fleshly manifestations or the works of the flesh in us, it will give the devil an opportunity to influence us in a greater way. And that is why for us as believers, we always say, walk in the spirit. You know, Paul said that, walk in the spirit that you may not, um, you know, uh, satisfy the desires of the flesh. But when I make a decision that I want to walk aligned to the word of God, Satan will try. He will try all he wants, uh, but it will not affect us. Okay, that is why the armor is given to us. It's like you can imagine. Uh, I don't know how many of you have played these games. You know, in some places you have a, a setup where they uh, they give you a, like a suit, 
to put on and then it, it's a game you know so everyone is given those guns or uh, uh, guns which have some sort of a sticky arrow in them and then you walk through the dark place and everyone shooting at each other till you finish the game right but if you have your armor or if you stand behind some pillars then you escape you are unhit so basically that's the job of a believer our job is to escape satan is it possible to escape satan very much because jesus has done the redemptive work and he has given us what are known as the weapons of warfare the weapons of warfare okay we have to use the weapons against the devil and uh, also walk in the spirit when he has nothing in us that agrees with him he'll try he'll try but nothing will stick to us and we can come out you know victorious uh, and this is the level at which one must uh, one must demolish or nullify the influence of the devil okay um, the bible also talks about using the shield of faith when i use my faith again same thing you know you you hold it up what happens when somebody holds up the shield the arrows will come but it will not touch us so constantly satan will try to shoot his arrows but we are protected we are immune okay by taking care of ourselves so this would be the first level where he uh, wants to gain access now if let's say the believer is not careful there are works of the flesh or you know there's no faith and all that then wrongfully he can gain access is it uh, lawful for satan to gain access into our lives actually no because we are redeemed now we belong to god so there's no work of satan in our lives but if we open the door we usually talk about it if we open the door for him he can gain wrongful access and then he can start afflicting us affecting us in a greater way now that is known as oppression so oppression is the next level so as a result of oppression what are some things that can happen manifestation you know of the oppression can happen in a person's life so something like sickness actually the sickness may not be a natural thing you know for example if uh, let's say i go out in the cold it's it's very cold and i go out i get drenched in the rain what is a natural process i catch a cold right and and then i'm sneezing or whatever i am a little bit feverish that's a natural thing but when you talk about oppression what happens is the enemy has now there's no particular reason why this person should be sick in this way but it is a manifestation of oppression in that person's life it's a demonic work you get it so there is a sickness but that sickness is connected to demonic activity so he can oppress people with sickness or it can be some form of mental challenges like you know somebody is going through depression but that is demonic okay it's not a natural cause in a demonic way there is this oppression taking place depression or there can be some sort of a uh, bondage you know addictions sometimes these i mean generally we we notice that addictions are uh, sort of empowered from from the spiritual realm and people want to break out of it but they are not able to it's as if something is pushing them you know to uh, continue in those bondages or those addictive habits addictive behavior or you can see a manifestation of something more serious like some major mental health issues people people uh, begin to display or emotional uh, emotional uh, state is disturbed or um, you know there are some behavioral strongholds different things happen but the point is there is a strong demonic influence 
which is now beginning to manifest in the person's, whether it is the physical uh, health or their soul part of who they are. Okay, so that is known as oppression. Now, even there, if the person does not find freedom, it moves to the next level. All right, so that is what we call as possession for an unbeliever uh, and uh, demonization for a believer. How does it look? See, when it comes to possession, till now, till oppression level, you could say that the individual had some control on their own faculties and i say faculties uh, i mean you know uh, we we have uh, our mental faculties that help us make some decisions make choices speak communicate relate but these faculties also demons can take over so that is why when uh, we we notice there are people who are possessed even physically the demons can express themselves because there is no longer control of faculties that are helpful in uh, communication or you know all, all the other things that I listed out. Now suddenly the demon is using the vocal cords of a person or the facial expression of a person and expressing themselves. Okay, so in possession, what happens is the level of control that demons have is much greater they begin to take over the faculties of a person to express themselves or maybe this person doesn't want to go to to uh, uh, you know like a bar or something but the demons will drive them use their body push them over there get that person drunk the person doesn't want to but now there's no control left so this is demonization or this is uh, demon possession okay now we would notice that in most instances in our experience we may have seen somebody who is we use the term manifesting have you heard manifesting they are manifesting right so manifesting or the expression of the demon that has overtaken this person is coming through but not always it can be uh, partial, meaning uh, maybe when sometimes we've, we've, we've all seen this, when worship is going on, some people start manifesting. Or when, when the, the ministry time is going on, some people start manifesting. Okay, So only sometimes they manifest. Other times they seem quite normal. They're going about their normal lives. You'll never even guess that they are demonized or they are demon possessed. So it can be like a part-time or you know, sometimes the expression happens. But in some situations, the demonization is so bad that that person is fully taken over by demons, where the entire time, you know, they may not have uh, their mental faculties, they, they're not able to think, or they look as if um, uh, you know they're unconscious. There's zero control. Okay, so I have heard some pastors, they have shared that they have ministered to people like this, where families, they have called them and told, oh, my child, my daughter, she's not even getting up. She's not doing anything. She's always, uh, you know, looking like she cannot think. Even if she's awake, she's she doesn't have any capacity to speak or all that. So something is happening, pastor, please come pray. Okay, so uh, you see that when people are possessed, it can come through. It, the expression can be seen either the entire time or sometimes. Okay. Now, people who are demon possessed, unbelievers, we can understand. You know, they are manifesting. When we sometimes pray, we see their face is changing, their voice is changing. I have heard one uh, one of our outreach pastors. He told he went to pray for somebody, and uh, that. She's a lady. She suddenly became so strong. She lifted the bed, you know, like cot is there, right? One leg of that thing, she lifted the entire bed up. Can you imagine? And uh, But he didn't get scared. He has seen so many such people. But he said that's what happened. Like her physical strength just changed. 
in moments and you know they try to do all these things again so that remember i shared intimidation it's a tactic to scare us we think oh my goodness if they are so powerful i have to be you know i have to be safe but don't get scared about all these things okay uh, you would notice that these expressions come through now can a believer manifest what do you think can a believer manifest can can demonization also show like you know their voice changes or they behave in all these ways is that a possibility what do you think any thoughts sometimes possible okay okay possible yeah people are saying possible what about online students what do you think you yeah, thank you for those answers here about the weapons of our warfare mm, but uh, any any thoughts about yeah so sean if the person is weak in spirit it might be possible oh, okay fine sure so sean is also saying it might be possible so that's that's a reality uh, that sometimes we see believers also manifesting but we should not make the mistake of saying you are demon possessed how come you are born again how come you know you are uh, um, manifesting or your your son is manifesting maybe he is not born again no they could be born again and yet they could be manifesting it is a possibility okay but the whole point is at every stage we want freedom because god has already given us the weapons that we need he's already given us the victory through the cross the power of the spirit okay so that we will talk about it later but now all this is for our understanding so demonization or possession that stage we have understood now let's go on let's see what else is there the next one is empowerment okay, empowerment so what is this level of um you know demonization that a person comes into possession is when the demon spirits take over the faculties of a person but in the case of empowerment uh, they begin to give supernatural powers to a willing individual or let's say they have completely deceived the individual and taken over the the mind of this person and they start to work through a person so in this category we may find that uh, um, there are there are people who practice witchcraft so sometimes they demonstrate some supernatural powers and because of who they are they now become influencers through that demonic empowerment okay so you understand so that is why we use the term empowerment it's not a positive empowerment it's a you know destructive empowerment so the demon spirit or spirits are now giving power to this person to influence and control uh, it could be you know a certain community many communities entire regions okay so we see that in the book of acts we see that when uh, the gospel is being preached in acts chapter 13 to a government official that official is not able to understand it uh, in uh, in paphos there there is a sorcerer by the name of elimus okay then what happens the uh, like uh, paul he rebukes he says okay blind you will be blind so when this sorcerer is sorcerer is out of the picture then that person is able to believe so what is happening there is an individual who is controlling through the empowering of spirits so there can be such influencers and many of them they engage in witchcraft they engage in uh, you know black magic casting spells you know we also see that there are terms like medium mediums so they uh, talk they they are the connecting um, uh, 
unit between the spirit realm and the natural realm so they hear the voices of you know dead people something and all so mediums there are there are mediums uh, there can be other kind of individuals who do signs wonders miracles okay and the people get deceived when they look at these people and they think are wow amazing you know you're saying that god can do miracles but see this there is some power here this is also a supernatural power and uh, so tell me how how come you're saying only uh, god can do this these people are also doing it but it's like that story of moses and the sorcerers where moses could do but to some extent the sorcerers could copy him but they could not replicate you know the plagues of egypt isn't it egypt was in calamity god's power is much greater so these empowered individuals to some extent they can display supernatural power okay uh, so this is how we see the taking over of demonic spirits uh, but then for a believer we must always remember that if a believer is walking with the lord if a believer is overcoming um, the works of the flesh and you know the most important thing is when we are convicted even the smallest conviction comes into our hearts right where god says uh, this is not right or you lose your peace over something i shouldn't have said that i should not have gone there i shouldn't be in the company of these people you take it seriously right and you begin to walk um, in a righteous path follow even the small convictions that come from god's word god's spirit keep our lives clean so the way jesus said he has nothing in me satan has nothing in me we should be in that position that's when we can live a victorious christian life okay and for us our body is a temple of the holy spirit so why i love demonic influences and you know uh uh we we need the holy spirit christ is the one who is dwelling in us and we have to go forward with that and never give a devil a foothold in ephesians 4:24 um paul talks about it in believers are instructed not to give any place or uh, it's a place of access to the devil so when we are careful then we can actually overcome okay. all right um so having seen how this taking over or increasing levels of demonization in individuals works uh, it becomes important for us to also understand how to minister deliverance isn't it at every stage now if a person is um, under the influence a young person comes to you and he says mm, uh, pastor i'm going through all these temptations i don't know what to do he's just in the category of influence right now and i'm discerning it oh okay it's just influence okay come on then i'll teach him uh, that okay uh, here are some scriptures which are well, relevant to your situation this is what god is saying you meditate you confess you declare okay and uh, then i might give him some practical advice and say oh, you're feeling tempted because you're going to that place stop going there or something like that some practical advice i might give and that would be helpful to release that person from the situation but when it comes to increasing levels we'll have to learn how to minister deliverance how to cast out that demon or set of demons we'll go to deliverance ministry soon all right so let me um, take a pause here i know we discussed quite a few things uh, if there are any questions or Uh, any comments we can take that up now and then we will proceed further from here okay we've understood it's pretty clear isn't it okay let's move on then let's go to um, 
the section on temptation and see how temptation really works. Okay, so I'll share a gist of how uh, this temptation, Satan uses temptation. So in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, we read about the temptation of Jesus. Okay, and I have told this to us many times that uh, it was in the area of his mind. So that's how Satan was able to tempt him. And in the book of Hebrews, there are passages like um, Hebrews chapter 2, uh, verses 14, 17, 18, Hebrews 4, and verse 15, which tell us that though Jesus was tempted in many ways, he was without sin. So Jesus is an overcomer. As far as temptation is concerned, one thing we can be very clear is that Jesus overcame temptation. Did Satan spare Jesus of temptation? Because he's a son of God. Okay, exempt, exemption. Jesus, we will, I will not tempt you. No, even Jesus was tempted. Sometimes uh, believers have these questions. Uh, they say things like, I mean, I've um, come across uh, incidents where I've, I've been asked, Okay, I never want to be tempted again. Now I'm a believer. I want to live for God. I want to live a holy life. Pastor, please pray that I'll never be tempted. Is that possible? For that, you know, we have to be in heaven. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, so, so that Satan will not tempt us. But when we are here, we are here in our body, in the flesh. Even Jesus, he didn't spare. So what are we told? It's a very common tactic of Satan, temptation. Uh, and the good thing is, from our example, the Lord Jesus and the pattern of his life, we see that he was tempted in every way, but he overcame all of them, yet without sin. One more point for us to understand. The, the uh, you know, scripture says that Jesus was tempted in every way, yet without sin. So is temptation sin? No, isn't it? So, uh, for example, I am going through my day uh, in, in a surrendered, in, surrendered to God. And, um, you know, I've said, okay, Lord, I've committed my life to you. Suddenly a thought comes to my mind. Okay, and it's a thought of greed where I feel, wow, if I had so much money or if I did this, I can get the money. If I just put the signature, I will get so much of money. What is it? It's a temptation leading to greed. Okay, so as a believer, immediately, I'm like, what is this? I just now I prayed for three hours. You know, I fasted for one week and uh, this thought is coming. Sorry, Lord. You know, I'm so sorry, Jesus. It's okay. I mean, maybe sometimes we are co concentrating on, on money and all, getting things. So it has come. But there can be times when my mind is pure in that area. I'm not, a, in general, a greedy person. But what Satan does, you know, he'll put that thought into our minds. Or maybe a thought of lust, which is normally driving. You know, sometimes you're just driving down the road and suddenly you see a picture and all kinds of thoughts start coming into your mind. And you're like, how did this happen? You know, I just came out of four hours of speaking in tongues and uh, what's happening to me? But you know what? That's how Satan works. He'll plant a thought. Okay. So the first thought, that is not sin. But if that first thought becomes your second thought, then yes. Because what, what are we doing? Something in me is agreeing with Satan. So the second thought is sin. But the first thought is not. Okay. So when the first thought comes immediately, start pulling out your weapons. For it is the will of God. You know, in the book of Thessalonians, it says, your sanctification. So it is God's will that I be sanctified. 
and that verse says flee youthful lusts so sorry satan i have no time for you i have other important things to take care of so begin to think about other things right so in this way uh, the thoughts will come but that first thought it's not sin but if we begin to agree with what is put into our minds the second thought the third thought the fourth thought along, along those lines that becomes a sin so this is how satan tempts us so is what the thoughts in our minds okay is it all from satan is that a yes is that a no the heads are shaking round and round so i don't know huh 100% no okay 100% no all right so good good to have that clarity the thoughts in our minds are one our own thoughts because remember uh, like we have to make some choices i will our own decisions there can be thoughts from god you know the way satan plant plants his thoughts god also puts for example nehemiah you remember he was thinking about the broken down city walls that's a good thing so god also can put something in our hearts like you need to do something about your uh, your city uh, or uh, these people the poor people so god is putting some thoughts some thoughts are ours but there are some thoughts which are satans so we have to do the work of a gatekeeper you know what uh, gatekeepers do uh, and nowadays there's like id card and all so you just do the doors will open or close so basically it's like that any thought which is from god open the gate okay i love it any thought which is not from god you shut the gate okay so that's the way in which we will tackle temptation so now let's also understand uh, a little further about the temptation this is given for us from 1 john chapter 2 verses 16 and 17 uh, i'll request anyone to read that passage i don't know whether we can look at it in detail today but at least read it and then we'll explain it in the next class 1 john yeah uh, mike for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will of god abides forever yeah. amen so here all that is in the world the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life so there are three categories there are three categories in where satan tries to draw us away from god okay now how to understand these three categories we can think of the example of eve eve who was tempted by the fruit in the garden so we read that she saw it and you know it looked good to her it looked good to her the lust of the flesh is when she desires to eat it she saw it and that satisfied her but then the next thing is that she wants to experience it by eating it as a lust lust of the flesh and the pride of life we understand pride of life is uh, the way he told uh, adam and eve that you will be wiser than god you know, have something have achieve something out of it so there are three uh, ways or three uh, manners in which he he tries to he try to deceive eve so the lust of the eyes is how do we understand this you know when we look at something we find gratification in it okay so lust of the eyes there are many things in the world where we can just look at stuff and uh, you know that gives pleasure and 
we all understand especially in our generation so many um uh, you know immoral things are done and there are pictures that don't glorify god there are this stuff you know pornography things like that so that would fall in the area of lust of the eyes where just by looking at some stuff people find gratification or satisfaction so what is what is john writing he's saying there is the lust of the eyes satan gives us that and says hey you you will feel better you know you will feel good but that's not true you never feel it's never enough so the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh is the way eve saw the fruit and that gave us some satisfaction but then the lust of the flesh is to experience it there are temptations in the world where satan wants us to get into it to experience and that destroys our lives it could many areas where we lack self control whether uh, you know it can be even the natural appetites but we go overboard on those natural appetites uh, or sexual appetites right we go outside the boundaries of what god's word is saying uh, to us what happens that is actually the lust of the flesh because satan is tempting us he's telling us you experience this you will find gratification satisfaction a big lie lust of the eyes lust of the flesh pride of life you know pride of life is okay have all this status and all you'll be uh, respected you'll find honor but all of these things are what what does it say they are from the world it's not of the father the father is not giving you these things it's of the world or um there i think the word that's used is cosmos the systems of the world are trying to attract us into these things but these are actually temptation we have to understand and stay out of it okay we have just enough time for that much what i'll do is uh, i will look at the process of temptation a little later yeah one question yes Mm. Okay, so uh, Chira's question is: Does Satan know our thoughts? So the answer is no. He cannot, unless you share it. Like if you're speaking to somebody, then he will know what you're. Like you, you're telling your plans, right, to someone. I'm going to do this. Then he can know. But if it's within your mind, Satan cannot know it because he is not omniscient. Omniscient is God's nature; it's God's attribute. Satan cannot. Anything else? All right. So. Ah yes. Hmm. Like we are. Like I can. Hmm. Okay. Can Satan kill? Um. no see if you have planned to share the gospel with someone um would he try to would he try to keep them away from you sharing the gospel yes he can try in many ways and uh, i don't know whichever way he wants he can try hmm yeah so see we know that satan is very wicked okay and uh, that's what jesus said he said the thief comes to steal kill and destroy ultimately he wants to kill and destroy everybody that's what he wants so he will he will work on that person but what we need to do is you pray you just pray cover them with your prayer um and do other practical things you know to uh, reach out to them right okay so uh, let's wrap up then let's pray and close uh, can one of you please pray i think the mic is with you right yeah 
thank you jesus thank you lord thank you for this session lord jesus thank you for uh, giving understanding more understanding of your word thank you for everything thank you for nancy ma'am thank you for this class lord jesus lord all glory and honor belongs to your name in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you vimal thank you everyone god bless you we'll see you in the next class bye for now